told that p is a positive integer, q is a positive integer, and p minus q is a positive integer. The latter means that p is greater than q. Because we're interested in which one is least, we immediately see that we can rule out b and e, because these are necessarily going to be greater than 1, because you're taking a, a bigger number and dividing by a smaller number. We could just do a little example to see that. So let's say that p was equal to 10 and q was equal to 5. Then p divided by q is going to be 2. p squared divided by q squared is going to be 100 over 25. It's going to be 4, actually. So you can see, because I'm ended up doubling p and doubling q and then dividing them, but originally when one was twice as big as the other one, when you square them, you get four times as big. The square of p is four times as big as the square of q. When you take the square root, it's going to be root 10 over root 5. We're actually going to get root 2. So it gets closer to 1. And the consequence is that p squared over q squared is going to be greater than p over q, greater than root p over root q, but all are going to be greater than 1. And this is something true for all positive integers. Like I'm just kind of like giving an example with numbers, but it will always be true if p is greater than q. One little consequence actually that we could now do is if um, we could rearrange it. So if p squared over q squared is greater than 1, then clearly q squared over p squared is going to be less than 1. And all of them are going to be less than 1. But we could now actually use the fact that p squared over q squared being greater than p over q, because they're all positive, we could cross multiply to give q p squared is greater than p q squared. And then we're going to get that q over p is greater than q squared over p squared. Because when I'm squaring it now, it's becoming like a um, p is now four times as big as q, so the fraction is going to get even smaller. And I've just tried to show that algebraically because what I'm trying to, I can just jump into it now. I can say that therefore q squared over p squared is going to be less than q over p. And along similar lines, this is going to be less than root q over p. I know I had them, or, or this is equ equivalent to remember to root q over root p. So we could, in fact, order them. We could say that the smallest has got to be a, actually, q squared over p squared. And then the second smallest would be q over p, and then root q over p. And then from our earlier results, we had um, root p over root q, and then q, uh, p squared over q squared would actually be the biggest. So I hope I've convinced you with that. You can use numbers to help yourself, but to, to help understand it. But basically, when we're squaring, that the numbers get kind of they double or they you know they times by themselves twice, and that is why this one, like with p being bigger than q, when you square it, it's going to be another way of writing it would be q over p times q over p. So clearly, because this is less than one and this is less than one, it's going to get even smaller than q over p. All right, I've gone into quite a lot of detail. I hope you're happy with this. A is the answer.